Robert. 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 Robert Downey Jr. is facing two felony charges, possession of cocaine and the tranquilizer Valium. The charges stem from his arrest at a Palm Springs hotel over Thanksgiving weekend. If convicted, he faces more than four years in prison. Inside, the judge put the case on hold, granting a defense request for more time to examine evidence. However, both sides say they're ardently working together, trying to hammer out a plea bargain agreement. It's been good. Both sides are communicating well. I think everyone wants to reach an agreement. Exactly what that is going to be, I don't know yet. We're just trying to figure out what's best for Mr. Downey. Meantime, defense attorneys say the actor is upbeat and currently in a drug treatment program. He's very positive about this case. He's positive about the direction his life is going at this time. He is uh, very pleased with his recent uh, professional successes. The success Downey's attorney is referring to is the actor's Golden Globe win earlier this month for his work on the Fox TV show Ally McBeal. Downey currently is in negotiations for a possible return to the show, but of course all that depends on the outcome of this case. I just kind of started watching that show recently when he came on because of him, so I guess you could say because of him I'm watching the show now. <laughs> I guess you're hoping that he stays on the show. Yeah, he's, he's brought a lot to the show. He's a good character for Ally. She needs someone like him. <laughs> Downey returns to court February 21st, hoping to avoid what undoubtedly will be a high-profile trial. In Indio, I'm Linda Grasso for E! News. It was a setup, Bob. The boyfriend made the call. Crews are still on the scene of last night's train collision in Beaumont. This morning, a member of the cleanup crew was nearly crushed to death. And right now, San Timoteo Road west of Interstate 10 remains closed. News Channel 3's Dan Ball has continuing coverage now on the derailment and today's cleanup effort. A sea of twisted metal lines this county road just west of Beaumont. There were two trains, one headed west from Texas, the other eastbound from Colton. And then around 9 p.m., something went wrong. Apparently a car had derailed back in this train and was fouling the eastbound main track. This train right here came up and hit that car that was sticking out onto the main track and derailed these locomotives. And then about, uh, well, there was probably about 20, 22 cars altogether derailed. Witnesses say the sights and sounds of these two steel giants colliding was frightening. Then all of a sudden we heard a big loud commotion. Boom! Then the, the, uh, cars start stacking up like dominoes, you know, and uh, and all, it was like all hell broke loose. Now when the train derailed, it was carrying a variety of cargo, everything from grain to scrap metal and even some diesel fuel. But Union Pacific officials told me that none of it was hazardous to the area. As soon as local rescue crews had pulled the engineers from their locomotives, Union Pacific assembled a small army of workers, semis, bulldozers and cranes all in an effort to clear the tracks and get things rolling again. But while crew members began their work early this morning, a cleanup crew member was nearly crushed to death by this crane. He was life flighted to a local hospital and is listed in critical condition. As for the enormous pile of wreckage blocking the rails and the roadway, Union Pacific hopes to have things back on track within 10 to 12 hours. In Beaumont, Dan Ball, News Channel 3. Dan Ball is live in Indio. Dan, the fire right over your shoulder. What can you tell us now? Well, Jeff, it looks like they've got this fire under control. If you take a peek over my shoulder, you see firefighters there from the Riverside County Fire Department kind of hosing down those hot spots. Again, this was just a detached garage from a home, but the home did have eight people inside, four children and four adults. And, of course, this could have turned out a lot worse if it was not for this neighbor who beat on the door. We're going to call him a hero. If we can find him, hopefully we'll talk to him, and you'll see him on News Channel 3 at noon and later on Live at 5. But from what the people inside tell me, you can take a peek at some video from earlier this morning. The flames broke out, as I said, in their garage where they run their plumbing business out of. There were five vehicles parked in and around the garage along with a boat and all their plumbing supplies for this company. Again, it broke out around 5.30 this morning in North Indio in their garage threatening their home, but because there was a good 10 feet or so between the garage and the home, it was detached. The flames just barely grazed the house, a little bit of damage and some smoke damage, but they're telling me they may be able to let these people back into their house within a couple hours. They also had to evacuate several of the mobile home and modular homes surrounding this house. It's built up on kind of a, 
a, a raise here, a rise above these homes, and the smoke and wind and flames were blowing to the east towards a lot of these homes, so they've evacuated those people. They're telling me they'll let those folks back in in about an hour or so. You see them in the video standing around. Now, Riverside County Fire Department responded with a lot of fire engines and trucks to this blaze. Matter of fact, one of the firefighters was coming in. Uh, he's with the investigative team. He told me he could see the flames, not the flames, excuse me, the smoke from Whitewater this morning when he was on the freeway coming in. So this going up very quick, very fast. It was fully involved from 5.30 to about 5.40. Fire trucks got on scene with about 10 or 15 minutes and of course got these flames knocked down. Now it's about 7 o'clock so this blaze has been burning for about an hour and a half and it seems they've got it under control. No firefighters injured battling this blaze and of course stick with News Channel 3 throughout the morning. We'll give you the latest on this breaking story as it becomes available to us. Jeff? Okay, and I'm curious to know, you don't know by chance yet the uh, name of that plumbing business because you haven't really had a chance. News Channel 3's Dan Ball joining us live in Yucca Valley with the very latest this morning. Dan. Good morning, Jeff. Well, it's relatively calm this morning here in Yucca Valley in the high desert, but as you can see, still remains of this flooding. It started last week. Wednesday was the first big flood here in Yucca Valley. If you remember, we were up here live Wednesday afternoon and Thursday morning. They were trying to clean up from that storm, and then over the weekend they got a little bit of rain, and then, of course, that tragic story out of 29 Palms on Tuesday where another flash flood hit there, killing three people, and then in a separate accident, a fourth person was killed. So we've had about two to three days of flooding. Now, yesterday, they had a little bit more flash flooding in some of the higher areas, not down here in the lower areas so much. A few more homes were damaged. We've got some video that we shot yesterday. You can tell that the video you've been looking at all week long since last week, this isn't as dramatic. The flooding was a little bit lighter yesterday. They only received about a half an inch to an inch yesterday in the higher desert. But these flash floods we've been seeing now for the past week have been, of course, a lot more damaging. We've seen homes, fences swept away, cars swept away. And I'm joined now by Scott Clark. He's with Clark Construction Company. His company was called in just a couple days ago. They got here yesterday. They were actually in Needles doing their gig, construction, and they got called in to help the high desert clean up and try and get some of this mud and all this debris off the streets. And Scott, how's it been going up here? Tough job? It's uh, been tough. We're trying to just keep the high speed, high traffic roads open, you know, take care of the businesses. We'll get to the residential areas later, but right now it's just trying to keep the roads safe. Our top story tonight, a 12 year old boy is recovering after falling from a cliff and getting stuck in a crevice today. Now it happened at the Painted Canyon campground east of Mecca where the boy's family and friends were camping. Now the boy and his friend had gotten up early to go for a hike and were working their way along the rugged cliffs when he slipped and fell 25 feet finally lodging in a crevice. Now the friend ran for help and his father called 911 after unsuccessfully trying to lower him a rope. Now more than two dozen firefighters and rescue personnel responded along with the CHP helicopter, also an air medic helicopter. It took rescuers an hour and a half to reach the boy. He was pulled from the crevice, as you can see right there, and airlifted to Loma Linda University Medical Center. His hiking companion tells us what he saw climbing up through these hills and we were looking for a way down and we mistaked the right way for a crevice and he was climbing down and he slipped and fell right through and he fell approximately about 15 feet now he's just stuck in the, stuck in there well that boy did suffer head lacerations also complained of ankle and back pains he is expected to make a full recovery